Walkman. This is how we live here. Little by little. As always, I have the most advantageous position here. Everything is comfortable. Everything is fine. Something is always burning all around. My position is absolute fire. I have to watch over there. Just sit and look there. Everything is safe. Wow! Wow! Why are you shooting at me? When you first enter Bakhmut, you are told, now the guides will lead you to the position. You think to yourself, oh, guides, they must be some cool scouts. They definitely know everything very well. Cool. You just follow them, and they tell you everything, like, Russians on your three o'clock here. We dash through here. Here we crawl, careful here, shelling. And so, you follow them, and on the third day you yourself already know all that, and they tell you, urgently assign two guides to lead a new group in. And that's it, you are already a guide yourself. At night, it is a rather difficult task to walk one and a half kilometers without anyone getting lost. That is, you must be in control of the situation around you, keep a certain distance. A group that is flocked to avoid getting lost to reach the destination point is at great risk. It can easily get ambushed caught under fire, and destroyed. Therefore, we need guides who know the terrain well. Know well where the enemy is and those guides must plan the route to avoid fire contact. I mean, you are constantly ready to engage in a fight, if necessary, but, in general, it will be a bad thing to happen. If you're leading a group to positions and you get caught in a fire contact, then you are a terrible guide. Hit. That's where we've got to go. Crawl. Do not rise. What? First day here. Damn, what a hellstorm. The day's over. Shall be well, brother. Does it hurt? Nah, it's fine. Our units, our neighboring units, constantly need fire support. Because the Russians just as quickly resupply their ammunition. Each their delivery of ammunition means their roles in the next hour or two. Therefore, it is necessary to constantly and quickly suppress them. Our guys work accurately down to the last millimeter. We had to deliver ammo. On sleds. Hell no, on our own backs, 50 kilograms, a crate with mines, me and another guy. Due to the fact that in some places the snow was reaching the waist and there were shell craters beneath it, it was quite difficult to move. Especially, it got extra difficult as it began to melt, especially when you're missing a leg. Want to see? <laughs> Good thing I've changed my sock. Dan, what should we choose, grenades or ammo? Get the grenades. We also need something to shoot with. Guess I've grown too old for this. Your cam is not working. Bakhmut. <laughs> hey, dog. Hercules the dog. Clean dog. 
clean. That's it. I've got it. Get everything we have. We were told to take the front defensive line. My combat mate and I and another guy who was later wounded and evacuated. They sent another guy in his stead. From the house in which we were originally we moved a little to the right and asked a neighboring position to cover us with RPGs. They fired a couple of shots and we started to enter the house. There was a house and some barn nearby and there was a gap between them. We approached the house and I noticed that all the windows in the house were bricked up. At first, I was surprised, then my warmate spotted a hole he wanted to throw a grenade through. And just in that gap between the house and the barn, he got five bullet wounds. I radioed that we had a wounded, requested help. Mates from the nearby positions rushed to us and began evacuation. I cut off his body armor and we started to evacuate him. While we were evacuating him, Russians tightly pinned us down with a machine gun. One of our mates got killed, but we pulled out that wounded man. I applied two tourniquets to him and two occlusive seals, bandaged his neck and head. Now he is in good condition. He speaks already and is recovering further. I will thank them later. Quietly, please. Who's there? Hey, it's my tea. Yeah, nice TV set. Would be great to have a PlayStation, huh? And here is a panoramic view. That's it, let's get out of here. At that time, the position was managed by a fighter with the call sign Legion. I was on the walkie-talkie with him all day and at one point he stopped coming in. Two minutes later, Balance got in touch with me and told that Legion got seriously wounded and exit wound to his collarbone. I was shocked. Then, five minutes passed and I heard on the radio, Legion here, everything is fine. I'm ready to continue fighting. I realized that half of our guys there had mild shell shock already. On the whole, the boys were already quite winded. I told them, pull back to the building. I got a little scared for them, gave them some slack, and told them to pull back. They began to move back, and then I thought to myself, no, why should we surrender our positions? I got on the line and said, Legion, can you storm Russians' position? He said, yes, I can. He began storming Russians, pushing them, and driving them into the hangar. The roof of that hangar had collapsed, and we could see the Russians from a drone. I told him, it is a very narrow space. Let's try to drop a few grenades in there through the roof, to not risk our men. The wounded legion answered me. 
I drove Russians here. I will finish them off. The greatest difficulty for a warrior here is at the same time his biggest gamble. You get thrilled. Only the most skilled survives here. Where are we going, lads? To Bakhmet. Toka, Toka, why did you get me into all of this? Into this story? Affordable housing for combat veterans. Which one do you like more? The one on the right. <laughs> Okay, what's in here? Oh, a restroom. Sorry, this one's for ladies. The men. I'm out for now.